Here we go then. So it's eight key questions that any property investor should ask a property sourcer. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, and these are some of the, you know, the key questions we get asked all the time. Hey. So Adam, that property you sourced me, will it achieve capital growth? Honest answer, I've never seen a property not achieve capital growth. Crystal ball. Yeah. I can't tell you what's going to happen next week, but I'm pretty confident. Every property I've ever bought, every property we've ever bought for clients has always gone up in value. Mm -hmm. Probably why best in class for any investment, really. It's why every pretty much millionaire billionaire has a property portfolio, even if it's not what that, even if that's not what made them a millionaire in the first place, you know? Mm -hmm. Markets go up, they go down, of course. If they're going down, you don't have to buy. The kind of house that you buy does have a bearing on the likelihood of the value rising or falling. And we can talk through that with you in a, you know, we, we have a buy to let order form, you could look at it and we talk through the, your plan, your goals, and with this house, is it likely to fit that, that uh, goal? Would you guarantee it? Mm -hmm. just, just say no. No, no. not guarantee it. Um, would you bet on it? Now, when I'm oh, say God, bet, yeah. when, when I say well, bet on it, all right. would you buy, yeah, would you buy some houses? Yes. Better question, did banks bet on it? Yes, it's a very good point, very good point. Banks will always, always give you a mortgage. Why do they do that? Because yeah. they know that- They don't give you a mortgage for crypto. Interestingly, and it's a number that you <clears throat> want to know and have in your mind. If you're buying the right kind of houses, and we could talk about what the right kind of houses are, and that, that is my personal opinion, what I think the right houses are. It's broadly speaking, I mean, there's a, there's a spectrum, but it's not, yeah. I keep using the example of a windmill, whatever, whatever. It's not, it's not whatever. It's also not the absolute smallest, crappiest, cheapest thing you can find. And some people mm -hmm. have joined that because that, that's got the highest yield, actually. You know, maybe it rents for a good number, but it's really cheap. So somewhere in the middle, you know, some average vanilla uh, could be described as a little bit boring. But if you're buying that kind of stuff, and that's what most of our landlords buy, if you want something else, if you want a five bedroom detached house in Mayfair, we'll go find that for you if you really want it. But, <laughs> um, you know, if you want the normal, vanilla buy to let stock which has got let's be honest even if one end of it and the other end of it is double the value it's still a reasonably um, narrow band of properties so i've been buying houses for 20 something years maybe longer and now and i didn't always i used to talk about it and i never actually did it and i started doing it about seven or eight years ago every time you buy a house you know what you paid for it and every time you refinance a house in the future years, you now get to know what, every value, what the value is at that point. Um, really simply, take the value at that point, draw a line all the way back to what you paid for it and keep doing that. Work that number into years and months and just think about that number versus your rent. There is no bank account or cash point machine to access capital growth. You have to do it yourself to work it out. Really, you could, you should. Um, I'll be honest, I don't. Um, I'm not that bothered by it. Um, get a valuation done every year, periodically, to work out what it's worth. Sometimes my accountant says it's time you need to do it, and so we do it. With a slightly larger portfolio, that's just one of the things you have to do. But always work out what it's worth now, what you paid for it, work it into months. And the thing you need to remember, it's totally true, every house that I own, and I've done that stat, the capital growth has been more, sometimes double, the rent. You're not doing this for rent, for capital growth, or sorry, for, for cash flow. You're doing it for the capital growth. The answer for me is yes. I won't guarantee it, but I am putting everything I've got on, mm. that, on that bet. I buy houses. That's all I do. Right house, right area. Make sure it's in the right condition. Rent it out forever, and it'll look after you. A little mm. short story. Mm. I know a landlord. He, he's not a landlord. That's the thing. He's a property owner, and had a conversation. Refused to rent the thing out. Just owned it. And he showed me on paper why that was the best investment he'd ever had. Uh, he used to go there and mow the lawn every Friday, every Saturday, at the weekends. It was his parents' house or something. Kept it, never rented it out. It was pristine, immaculate, and just went up in value. There you go. Answer your question. All right. Bye for now. Cheers. Cheers.